Hey there, this is Dan. And today I want to answer a question that I got from a reader the other day. So the question is, how do I start to contribute to an open source project as a relatively new Python developer? Um, and he goes on and says, I want to build up a portfolio of projects I have worked on and contributed to, and not just a portfolio of my own contrived projects. I'm thinking that evidence shown on GitHub or similar could be useful to a relatively new programmer like myself in order to demonstrate credibility. And I really like that thinking um, behind that, you know, and that whole motivation, because I think it is true. So if you have an open source project as a developer that you've contributed to or that you've maybe started yourself, that is going to be a strong signal to potential employers that you're, you know, you're just going above and beyond what other people are doing. And um, I, it can really help you get the job that you want. So um, really good tactic, really good strategy. I'm I'm totally aligned with that with that thinking here, and um, I guess the question was about how to get started, right? How do you start contributing to open source as a relatively new Python developer? So um, I don't actually know how much experience this person has, but um, you know I'm just going to assume they're sort of like an entry level, junior level position in, in um, when it comes to Python, their Python skills. So. There are a couple of thoughts on how you might get started. I guess one way to do it would be to just start your own project. You know, just write something that you think other people might find useful. And uh, you could get inspired maybe by browsing through Stack Overflow questions and just seeing you know, if there's some stuff that comes up time and time again. Maybe you could create some kind of library that helps people with that. Or maybe you can take an existing library from another programming language that doesn't exist yet in Python. And you port it over and you create a Python version of that. Obviously, you want to give credit um, where where you did that. And um, that could be a really valuable project. And it's maybe something that you can pull off even as a relatively new Python developer. It might also just be too much work and it might be, you know, super scary to do that. And it might be, you know, biting off a lot more than than uh, than you feel comfortable chewing at this point in your in your Python journey. Right. So maybe not that great of an option. Um, the other option I can think of is where you go in and you start contributing, or you try and start contributing to other people's uh, open source projects, you know, where it's actually something that you're not starting yourself, or you are not in control of the project, but you're working with other people. And that's actually a pretty great signal to send to to other employers as well, because it kind of shows, you know, you know how to play nicely with other developers, and um, you know how to navigate everyone's quirks and you know some personalities can be kind of tough to work with and um, that that could be a great asset you know for your portfolio so how do you get started with that well one way to do it is to just jump in and maybe create a pull request for a project or um, you know just send someone a bunch of code now, I know that's what a lot of people do because um, I, I get a lot of those uh, on some of my um, open source projects. But the problem with that is um, a lot of times it's very hard for the maintainer to, to actually do something meaningful with that code, right? You know, they didn't write it themselves, so they don't understand it. They have to read it. That costs time. Maybe the person was implementing, the contributor was implementing something, a feature that nobody really asked for. Um, maybe it was something that just complicates the code. Maybe the, the code standards are not up to snuff. Like I get a lot of code that doesn't have tests, for example. And if I want to bring that in, then I'm going to have to spend a bunch of time and write those tests, right? And so whatever you do there, you kind of want to do it from, from the angle of where maybe you're trying to build more of a relationship first with the, the team that's maintaining that particular project and actually see what, what they're looking for, what they think should be done on the project. And they're going to give you some tips, ideally, on how to contribute to this project. So this is more, I feel like this is more a social problem than it is a code problem. So um, what I would do is um, if there's a project you really enjoy working with, maybe what you can do is you can start, you know, helping, helping an existing project by providing some support to other users. And uh, maybe there's a forum where you can jump on and just reply to people's questions. Or uh, maybe there's um, the GitHub bug tracker for that, uh, for that project, or you know, some other open source bug tracker for that particular project. And you can jump in there and respond to a couple of people's questions and just see if you can be helpful. And that's gonna give you an idea also who the people are that are working on this thing. And then once you've 
you, you will always want to come, come in, in, in my opinion, you will always want to come in and, and bring some value and demonstrate that you're, that you're a good actor, right? Like in this system, like that you want to contribute to this thing. And so one of the best ways to do it if as a complete beginner is to actually just try and like, you know, help other people and take some, take some of the work off from the maintainers by doing that. And then, you know, maybe one day, like a little bit later when you have some kind of relationship with them or they've seen your name a couple of times, it could be like, hey, do you actually have anything, you know, that, that could be worked on? Like I actually noticed uh, maybe we could improve the docs or we could rearrange this or we could, um, um, you know, we could uh, make the website for the project a little bit nicer, improve the readme. So that is often stuff that's very welcome because it takes a lot of, you know, takes a lot of work to maintain the technical documentation, but it's actually super important for the long-term success of a project like that. So if you can come in and help with some of those things that most other people don't really like doing, then you actually stand a much better chance of um, being accepted as a contributor versus just you know throwing a bunch of code over the wall and, and seeing what sticks. So this is probably the strategy I would take as more of an entry-level Python developer, you know, where you find a project and there's always, you know, any project, whether large or small, it can benefit from having someone improve the technical documentation, you know, having like fixing some typos and, and doing stuff like that, you know, that's always well appreciated. And that increases your chances so much more to actually get a change merged into the project um, and, and to get credit for that change. So this is probably the strategy that I would take. You know, and it's, this is not only about like reaching out to people on the bug tracker. This is maybe also like just sending, you know, someone an email, just being friendly and like, hey, I had like this and that idea. What do you think about this? Or, um, you know, I, ideally you want to assume the person maintaining the project is very busy and you want to do whatever you can to not create extra work for them, but to actually be a net benefit for them, right? So where it's like, um, whatever you can do when you start that 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 relationship with that person whatever you can do to just bring a bunch of value without actually them having to, you know, reply to like a 500 word email or them having to read like your 500 word line code change and them having to do a bunch of work. Whatever you can do is to kind of come in in a way where, where what you do is really, really helpful. That's going to vast, vastly increase your, your chance of success there to get your, your contribution accepted. Now, you know, for my open source projects, really the people that I like working with are, are people where I, where I feel like I trust them. You know, I feel like they, they get it and they get the, the, where the project is supposed to go. And then I feel much more comfortable um, bringing them on as contributors because I don't, you know, I do this in my free time. I don't get paid anything for it. And um, I don't want to create uh, some sort of environment that, that I don't enjoy. You know, I don't enjoy collaborating with people that I don't like as a person. And I don't care, you know, how great they are as developers. Um, and um, I feel like a lot of other people maintaining open source projects are, are similar like that. You know, a, a lot of times, like there's so much focus on the technical stuff when it comes to programming. I feel like a lot of times what is really important is the human relationships. And, and you know, I'm not trying to, to like, um, I guess like make this all sound like very uh, wishy-washy and kind of like hippie flower power-ish. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, you want to you wanna have great code, you want to get the project pushed forward. But what I'm realizing more and more is just, you know, how much energy it takes to, to work with people that you don't like working with, right? And, um, and um, that is just something that I feel like a lot of maintainers have come to realize. And for that reason, they're, they're more likely to work with you if you can just bring a bunch of value, not create extra work for them, and then just kind of be a pleasant person. You know, it's like human interaction 101. And it totally applies to this computer stuff as well. Um, the other thing that I wanted to say is that, um, I know it is really hard to take that step, right? Like it is super hard to take, you know, to, to take that first step and actually like share some of your contributions with, um, with, uh, someone else or, you know, with, with an existing open source project. And maybe you have a maintainer who has done like really great stuff for the, for, uh, you know, um, on this project, it's like a super well-known, um, Python project. How do you... Like, how do you do that? You know, I know it's it's very um, it it, it takes a lot of uh, determination to to overcome that this initial barrier, right? And and really um, really do it and reach out. So, what I found is that um, it is much easier to do that 
when you either meet people in person or let's just say a more personal setting, um, even though that's online. So what you can do, for example, many conferences, especially for Python, PyCon, for example, they have um, what is called sprints, where people stay a little bit longer after the main conference is over, and they just get together and work on a bunch of um, open source projects, you know, work on some project. And the great thing there is that you can just show up there and be like, hey, I would love to help. I don't know what to do here. This is sort of my skill level. Do you have anything that, that I could tackle? And you're going to find that a lot of times when you meet people in person, they are going to be very, very helpful. And maybe they're going to spend a bunch of time even to train you to get up to speed with this project so you can start making changes. So this can be a really good way also to get your foot in the door if you can do that and actually show up where these people are. You know, and I know this can be super hard when you're um, you know, living somewhere where there's no meetups, where there's no conferences, where um, you, know, you can't fly there um, because the stuff is expensive too, and um, maybe you just can't do it. So there's other communities where people get together and, and do some of that, and it happens in a more personable setting. So for example, um, I run a forum called Pythonista Cafe. You can find it at pythonistacafe.com, and that is sort of a walled garden um, or um, you know, a, a closed community of people where we put a lot of emphasis um, that we accept the right members into this community. And so in this community, there have been some projects where people have collaborated and it's, it's just um, you know, an, an, a better setting, a safer setting in that sense, where people can, ask, can, can feel comfortable asking quote unquote dumb questions, you know, where you can just say like, hey, I would love to do this. I don't know how to do it, but uh, can someone help me out? And you have a far more likely chance that someone else is going to respond and kind of take you by the hand um, rather than you just getting shut down if you do the same thing on a public forum where people, you know, some people are just going to be mean and, and not treat the, um, the beginners or the newbies nicely. And so, um, you know, there is community, there are communities like that, um, even online where you can, where it's easier for you to break in and, and feel more comfortable and then actually do these like meaningful contributions. And then, you know, you can work your way, way up. So it's, it's all about this, like stair stepping your way up, right? Like once you've, you've kind of gotten the hang of it, like initially it will be maybe a little bit frightening how the whole like GitHub pull request stuff works. And, you know, how do you submit a pull request? How does it get reviewed? How do you make other changes? How do you pull in the latest changes from the, the main line, the master branch in Git? And all of these technicalities, you know, that, that you have to learn that are really, really difficult the first time you do them. But once you're past that barrier, you know, with your first couple of contributions, then you can step up your game. And this is really like a long-term um, long play. Um, and, and it's really like about building those relationships and, um, you know, doing this over the long term and then maybe getting invited or getting asked for help for other uh, projects. So, so this is kind of the, you know, my perspective on this stuff. This is how I would view um, this and this is how I would approach open source contributions and building up a portfolio with these open source contributions as a relatively new developer or as a relatively new Python developer specifically. All right, so I hope this was helpful. Um, let me know when you contribute to open source, you know, just leave a comment or you just to share your excitement with us here and let us know what, uh, what kind of project you worked on. I'd really love to know that. All right. Thanks so much for listening and have a good one.